I want to say a word about our first person who will introduce our first honoree, John Watson, Ambassador Jeffrey Bader. Jeff has had a truly outstanding service to our country that includes assignments at the State Department focused on East Asia, at the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, where he had responsibility for China and was a key negotiator for the bringing of China into the World Trade Organization, and as senior director for East Asia Affairs at the National Security Council in the Obama administration. In recognition of his outstanding service, Secretary of Clinton recently awarded him the Secretary's Distinguished Service Award. And we are delighted, really delighted, that after his government service, he has joined the board of the National Committee. So it is my very great pleasure to welcome Ambassador Jeff Bader to this podium. Jeffrey. Thank you so much, Carla. It's, it's really great to be, uh, see so many old friends and to be back in New York, my hometown, where I met my wife 26 years ago. And above all, to be out of Washington. <laughs> and um, it's uh, any event where uh, you can attend with Secretary Kissinger is an unbelievable honor. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the first of our honorees tonight, John Watson, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Chevron. John's distinguished career at Chevron began as a financial analyst in 1980 after he received his MBA from the University of Chicago. His leadership roles have included Chief Financial Officer, President of Chevron International Exploration and Production, and Executive Vice President for Strategy and Development, a position he held before assuming the role of Chairman and CEO of Chevron in 2010. John has also established himself as a thought leader on energy issues, serving as chairman of the American Petroleum Institute and as a member of the National Petroleum Council, the Business Council, Business Roundtable, J.P. Morgan International Council, and American Society of Corporate Executives. Chevron has been in China for over 100 years with a wide range of businesses from exploration and production to the marketing of fuels and lubricants more recently partnering effectively with major Chinese energy companies. Chevron believes in being a good corporate citizen and has supported educational, environmental, health, and other social programs in China. Now, no relationship will be more important in the 21st century than the U.S.-China relationship. The U.S. business community has understood this for the last three decades. But in the current difficult global and domestic economic environment, that support cannot be taken for granted, particularly in the energy and resource sector. One hears loose talk, which I believe reveals a fundamental misunderstanding of how energy markets function, about zero-sum game competition between the U.S. and China. John Watson believes that China can serve the needs of its customers, its stakeholders, and shareholders by working closely and effectively with Chinese partners, which he did recently on one of his many visits to China last month, and by building more broadly a framework of cooperation between our two countries. He understands the opportunities that China offers and what it takes to work with Chinese partners. Before John joins us on stage, we'll have a short, we'll see a short video on Chevron. So please, we can roll the video. Who is Chevron? We are heat and light and the ability to move, providing energy for growth, oil, 
cleaner burning natural gas and geothermal. As one of Asia Pacific's largest integrated oil companies, we are the energy behind the energy that's driving Asia today. China's partner for over 100 years, with significant investments in Asia Pacific's growth and a commitment to the future. We are people, progress, and ideas, working together to move us all ahead. We are the power of human energy. Now please welcome me, please join me in welcoming the chairman and CEO of Chevron, John Watson. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I appreciate the, the very kind words. Uh, I represent the Northern California half of the California Connection this evening, and, uh, and I'm delighted to go ahead of Disney um, on, on the podium. Uh, I, but I, I do thank you uh, very much, and for your three decades in public service advancing U.S. national interest in the Asia-Pacific region. I am very proud to accept this award on behalf of all my Chevron colleagues, especially those that actually are already at work uh, as we speak, producing and developing energy in China. I would also like to thank the National Committee uh, for your long and tireless efforts to strengthen the ties between the United States and China. Uh, the efforts are, of course, vital. The destinies of the United States and China are very much connected. And I'd venture to say that few matters now and into the future will be more fundamental to that relationship than our energy partnership. And on that subject, I do have a couple of quick reflections this evening. First, as China transforms its economy, Asia Pacific has become the center of gravity for new energy markets. A few weeks ago, I did return from a trip to China and other countries in the region where we have extensive operations. And every time I visit the area, uh, I'm astonished at just how much uh, things change in just short periods of time. In Beijing, I met with my counterparts in China's national oil companies, and they expressly pointed to our joint focus on safety and environmental stewardship. They are well aligned with us in those areas because they understand safety and prudent environmental management are necessary ingredients to China's continuing economic transformation. A measure of China's remarkable growth came last year when it surpassed the United States as the largest consumer of energy in the world. Just 10 years ago, China's total consumption was half that of the United States. And demand for energy, not only in China, but in the broader Asia Pacific region, is only estimated to grow, and faster than in most other regions of the world. But even as Asia exerts growing force on the demand side of the energy equation, the good news is it promises to play a significantly larger role on the supply side as well. Asia, including China, possesses abundant energy resources. A great energy opportunity for Asia is ahead. In light of that opportunity, we've dedicated a very significant portion of our long-term investment to Asia. Today, in fact, in terms of resources, we are the leading international oil company in Asia Pacific. And with our partners, we're the largest producer of oil, natural gas, and geothermal energy in the region. And that includes a growing presence in China. China does understand something fundamental about energy, how affordable and reliable energy supports economic development. Reflecting that understanding, China has developed a national energy strategy. 
and it addresses developing not only its domestic supplies of fossil fuels, but all forms of energy, including its own approach to renewables and energy efficiency. What it means for companies like mine is that China's state-owned energy producers are increasingly seeking opportunities to partner with private businesses, which leads to my second observation. Partnerships like these are essential. They're essential for China, and they're essential for the United States. Our roots in China go back, go back more than a century, when we first provided basic products to customers. Today, we also deliver advanced formulations of lubricants and additives and partner offshore and onshore in major oil and natural gas developments with Chinese companies. We're also partners in looking to the possibilities for developing China's significant deposits of shale gas. We bring specialized technologies and skills to our partnerships. Our expertise in safety and environmental management led China to invite us to partner with them to develop a world-class natural gas project that's very complex called Shandong Bay. Partnerships across my industry and others are growing in China. The political relationships between China and the United States continues to build on the momentum of these business partnerships with all of the broader economic implications. Continuing to strengthen our energy partnerships in China promises great mutual benefits. Companies like mine do contribute technology, expertise, track record on safety and environmental matters, and the ability to develop local communities and economies. But I would tell you it is not a one-way street. When it comes to energy at the national level, the U.S. might follow China's lead in a couple of very important ways. First, by recognizing energy as the foundation for economic expansion. And second, by implementing a comprehensive national energy strategy with a priority on affordable energy to meet national goals of economic competitiveness, energy security, and environmental management. My company is very proud to be a part of China's energy solution, and we're proud of our role in fueling economic growth in the wider Asia Pacific region as well. We're grateful to the National Committee, Carl, for its role, helping us do the same, fostering the dialogue and cooperation that strengthen business partnerships with China. So on behalf of my colleagues around the world at Chevron, I thank you very much for this award. Thank you.